Thousands of bikers hit the road Saturday to honor seven fallen people who were killed two weeks ago in a crash in New Hampshire. The 90-mile ride began in Laconia, New Hampshire, and ended in Randolph, where the crash happened. Eyewitness News reporter Caroline Goggin joins us now with the emotional tribute. The 23-year-old driver who police say struck and killed the seven bikers has pleaded not guilty to charges of negligent homicide. As he remains in jail, the community here in New England has come together to remember the victims, several of whom were from our area. That was something else to see every, oh my God, we spanned for miles. 3,000 bikers, some from as far away as California, met in New Hampshire on Saturday. Cheered on by hundreds of people, they rode 90 miles from Laconia to Randolph to honor the seven bikers killed in a crash last month. One of them was a local man, 58-year-old Daniel Pereira of Riverside. Friends describe him as someone who always wanted to give back to others. The outpouring of support has been something I've never seen the likes of in my entire life. At the ride's conclusion, a memorial service was held at a motel where the bikers had stayed. We're told many of them were Marines. And on Saturday, veterans from all over New England turned out to pay their respects. We made a statement. We show we are family. We care for each other. When one of us is hurting, we are all hurting. Last month's deadly crash sparked an investigation into the Massachusetts Registry of Motor Vehicles. It found the registry wasn't properly processing out-of-state notifications about driving offenses. In this case, officials say the truck driver in the crash, 23-year-old Vladimir Zukovsky, had a drunk driving arrest on his record in Connecticut. The report says despite that, Massachusetts failed to suspend his license. As he faces charges, a community grieves and lends a helping hand. It's the least we can do for them, and it's nice to see that everyone's coming out today, and I just hope this doesn't end today. A GoFundMe for the families of the victims has already raised more than $550,000. I'm Caroline Goggin, Eyewitness News.